phase converter. Okay, I just powered up the machine. The control's booting up right now. It's going to take about a minute for it to come up. When it does, it's going to ask me to home out the machine. Now, what exactly is homing? Homing is a technique used by the centroid control so that the control will remember your part zero positions even though the power has been removed. This is a great feature because you may have 15, 20 minutes in setting an XYZ part zero position on your fixture or vice. You wouldn't want to lose that effort just because you had to power down. Well, the control, when it boots up, it comes up and asks me, it says, press cycle start to send the machine to the home position. And notice I don't have a DRO, I don't have a digital readout display right now because the control doesn't know where it's at. So all I have to do to home the machine out is press cycle start. The homing process has started, it moves one axis at a time, Z axis first, then Y, then X. Okay, we're all done homing out. I know that because we have our DRO now being displayed. The digital readout, of course, is the current position of the tool relative to the last part zero position that we we're using. The control remembers that from day to day. Now we're ready to go use the machine. Well, let's check out the operator's console. I'm going to get you familiar with this. The centroid control has a dedicated operator's panel over here for jogging, turning the spindle on and off manually, the coolant and the flood, the mist, and a couple other nice features that we're going to use while we're machining, like the tool check feature, which you can stop and interrupt the job and restart at any point. You also have the feed rate override, emergency stop, and spindle speed override. These controls allow you to override the program feed rate and the program spindle speed on the fly. So if it's machining a little too fast or a little too slow, you can just adjust it with the knob right here. Now, how do I set zeros and how do I set up my tool libraries and program parts? That's all through the software. Now, how I navigate through the software is with the function keys on the keyboard. Right now, we're at the, what they call the main menu. This is the screen that comes up after homing. It has a whole bunch of choices down at the bottom. Set up, load a job, MDI, run a job, go into the computer-aided machining. A whole bunch of nice choices here for setting part zeros, setting your tools, programming parts, editing G-code, all kinds of good stuff like that. Well, how do I get into these menus? Well, underneath each one of these tabs is a little F1, F2, F3 button. These correspond to the function keys on your keyboard. So if I wanted to go into the setup menu right now, I would simply hit the F1 button on the keyboard. Now I'm in the setup menu. And it gives me a few more choices. The first choice is part, F1, that's setting up your part zeros. I want to go into that menu, so I hit F1 again. Now I'm in the part setup menu. And again, there's a whole bunch of choices related to setting up your part zeros that I can now use with the function keys. Also, another important set of keys to use is the arrow keys on the control. Anytime you have a cursor on the screen, the yellow cursor, you'll be able to move it around with the arrow keys to enter in values. If I would like to back up from the last menu, back up to the last menu that I was just at, all I have to do is hit the escape key. The escape key backs up one menu at a time. If I hit the escape key again, I'm back at the main menu. It's that simple to navigate through the control. Let me show you how to jog the machine around. I'm going to use the operator's panel here to move an axis. Now when the control is done homing out, by default, it starts out in incremental jog mode. What that means is whenever I hit the jog button, in this case the X positive jog button, that X axis is only going to increment by whatever amount is currently selected on the jog increment buttons. These are the times 1, times 10, times 100 buttons. That is a, the reason why it's times 1, times 10, times 100, it's a user settable feature in the control. It can be times whatever amount that I choose. Well, from the factory, the controls are set out so that times one is one ten thousandths of an inch. Times ten would be one thousandths of an inch. And times one hundred would be ten one thousandths of an inch. So right now, when we're done homing, if I do nothing but hit the X positive button, 
you'll notice that every time I hit the X positive button, that axis is jogging over by the times 10 amount, which is one thousandths of an inch every time I hit that button. Well, I'd like to get my vise over here in the middle of the travel, so I want to switch over to continuous mode. A continuous mode, in incremental mode, you can switch between the two right here with this button. Notice there's a light. When I hit that button and the light is lit, it's a dual function button. That means that when I hit that button and the light is lit, the word that's beside that light, that's the mode that that button is in. So right now, the light's lit and it's the word beside it's incremental. So I'm in incremental mode and you can see that every time I hit the button, it's moving a thousandths at a time. Well, I'm going to switch over to continuous by hitting that button and the light goes out. Now we're in continuous mode. So what that means is when I hit the X positive jog button, that axis is going to continuously move as long as I hold that button down. A nice feature about the centroid is it has dedicated jog buttons for each axis and each direction. So right now I'm holding down the X positive jog key. And as long as I hold that down, that axis continually jogs until I take my finger off the button. Now I'm holding down the X negative jog key. And keep in mind, this is tool movement. When I'm talking about X negative, that's the tool moving in the negative direction. So while I'm holding the X negative button down, the tool's moving in the negative direction, which means the table's moving to the right. Okay? You gotta always think in tool movements, whether you're programming or jogging or programming a line in MDI mode. Z is pretty easy to understand because Z down or Z negative is down and Z positive is up. But if I push the Y positive button, which way is that table gonna move? Well, Y positive is the tool moving away from us, so the table's gonna move towards us. If I choose the Y negative button, the, the tool has to come towards us, so the table's gonna move away. You gotta always think about the tool moving through a piece of material.